and they all lived happily ever after. I love a good happy ending. This series, this series is the greatest manga series I think I've ever read. It's got everything. It's got eldritch cosmic horror, the fear of the unknown, insanely cool beasts, epic fights and battles, an insane amount of gore, probably the greatest anti-hero. It's also got the hottest, <coughs> coolest antagonist you're ever probably going to get in a manga series. It's got the lot. As I, along with every other berserk manga fan out there, wait for new chapters to drop, I decided to make a Dark Souls model that reflects its greatest inspiration. Months ago, I was chatting with one of my Patreon members, a little Patreon plug for you there, and we were tossing around the idea of what if Guts was fighting a boss from Dark Souls, or even slicing one of the Mushroom Boys in half. But then I got chatting to good old Jack Septicai because at the time he was reading the Berserk series, and he made the suggestion of what if Guts was slicing the Onion Knight in half, and then call it Cutting Onions. So that's what it's going to be. My first step was to message the guys at Real Stone to see what kind of eye-watering model we could come up with for the Onion Knight being chopped in half. And those absolute legends came up with this. And that's where we begin. I'll get the files stuck into my printer slicer software and pop the Onion Knight file along with the Guts model from Nom Nom Figures into the printer and set it off over the next couple of days. Once printed, it's then onto the cleanup process, getting them washed and rinsed out and cured in the UV tanning bed. Now, I've been tossing up in my head how to get the top and the bottom halves of the onion attached together, but still have it movable enough so it can be repositioned around Guts's sword. So, I printed the onion hollow for printing reasons. So, I thought maybe filling each half with quick setting resin and sticking a thick armature wire in the top half will give me enough rigidity and strength to support the top half. It ended up being a pointless addition, but I added some red into the resin with the idea that it'll be a red gooey bloody inside, but no one's going to see it, so it wasn't needed. But I know it's there, and I guess you do now as well. Then I just got to start filling this onion up with some blood, and I almost forgot to pop on some nitrile gloves for safety when dealing with resin. Then it all kind of started going wrong a bit and started spilling everywhere. But once I got it all cleaned up, I can stick a little armature wire into him to create myself a lovely little onion lollipop and I'll just shove that to one side to set overnight. Now for the big angry dude. I printed him in a few split parts so I'll get him stuck together with some super strong glue. I'll leave the Dragon Slayer sword detached so that I can easily move things around when positioning my onion later. I'll use some Green Stuff World Putty to fill gaps and holes around the model to make it a little bit more flush. And then after all that, I then dropped him and broke him off camera. I've broken him off camera. And since that happened, he then failed to print not once, not twice, not three times, but four times in a row, which meant I lost about a good week on this project between now and this next shot. So with my onion lollipop that is now set and ready to go, I'll get him primed up with some black and then I'll do a little blasting of some white as a zenithal highlight base. Then I can get my newly reprinted guts on the spray table and get him primed a solid black. Now we can paint our little onion. Now you've probably heard of NMM, but this time we're going for OMM. Layers! Onions have layers. To paint an onion, you must first study an onion. Shit. Notice the shiny exterior and how the light bounces off of the onion. I want to make him look a bit more oniony than he does in game because this piece is called cutting onions. So I'm going to start with a thin basing of a light bone tone, which will be our kind of mid color. I'm also keeping every coat nice and thinned out so I can retain the shading underneath and use it as a mat to paint on my shadows and highlights. 
Now welcome to the world of lying in editing. I would tell you that I'm doing this off the cuff for the first time, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't f***ing stuff up on camera, so I tested this method out on the arms, which you can see have been fully painted already. You calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther. Now what I'm doing for the next step is taking a darker bone tone and going over where my shadows are sitting from the zenithal highlight. My general practice is after I've got my darker coat applied, I'll take a glazed consistency of it to help blend the two shades together a bit better. Then I can move down into my darker brown shadow and replicate the same method. And then the same for the highlights. Then with that ready, I'll dab some iron paint onto a small sponge and start splotching that all over the armor to give it that worn feel as if the armor paint is flaking off. And I'll take the same steps as before and go back over the whole onion. I'll pop shadows into where it makes sense for shadows to be within the ridges of the armor and using a glaze to blend between the tones. Go to the head of the onion and get some of those lovely onion highlights in and blend between the darker tones with even more glazing. Most importantly we have here is his Sigru which is flying off into the air as he's getting chopped in half, so I'll add some dark wood tones to the flagon and dry brush on some progressively lighter browns. Then I can get the little metal rings around it painted up with some metallic paint, and I'll do the same for the actual drink that's flying off as I did with the flagon, except with some even lighter shades of brown topped off with some cloudy dabs of white. And there we have a lovely little onion lollipop who kind of looks like he's up for a little bar fight. <coughs> It's then just a simple case of repeating what I did for the top half on the bottom half, making sure to keep everything nice and thinned out so you don't get any unappetizing buildup or big blotchy patches to it, and just remember that glazing with a 50-50 mix of your two tones that you want to blend between will give you a much smoother transition. We can finish off the armor with painting the chainmail with some metallic paint, and then flush it with some Nuln oil so it can settle into all the nice little ringlets and give us some nice contrast and definition. And we'll wrap up the onion by painting his little onion pants with some dark leather brown and add in some highlights around his onion bum and on the wrinkles to give us a bit of depth. And there we are, a fully painted up onion knight in the newly founded technique of OMM. Oh my leg. With our sunny onion done, I'll start painting the black swordsman. Now I want to keep the armor job quite straightforward because there's a lot to do, so I'm going to go with a light dry brush method here. There's a lot of good texture on this model so dry brushing will help bring the texture out quite nicely. So I'll start with a base of dark iron metallic paint and I'll keep it very dry so I retain a lot of the black shadow. And with a good first pass of dark iron, I'll start brightening up some of the raised areas with a lighter silver. Now for his face, I'm gonna follow this makeup contour reference in order to hit all of the right shadows and highlights. I'll start with a base of blue, which will give our shadows a nice cool tone. Now with the blue laid on, I'll start mapping out where my darker mid-tones are gonna sit and do a thin pass of this dark reddish flesh tone. Then move slightly inwards from that section with a slightly lighter variation. Still following the contour map, I'm going to take my mid-Caucasian flesh tone and start filling in the main sections around the cheeks, forehead, nose, chin, and his ears. And much like the onion, I'll take glazes of the tones to blend between the shade transitions. I can then start adding in my highlight tones to the face right in the center of the mid-tones to give us that nice contrast. Then a final tone of very light skin highlight to give us an extra dollop of depth and I can make sure all of the transitions are smooth before moving on to painting his eyes and teeth, which will be based with white. And then I'll add a super thin wash of red into the eyes, which will give it a bit of realism, and it will settle into the outer regions of the eyes and give some bloodshottedness to them. Because he's gone a bit mad here, I'm going full pupil and no iris, so two big black holes right in the center of the eyes, followed up with a tiny dot of white for some reflection. And that's the face done. For his hair, I'll add some greys into the strands for a bit of variation, and then give him his signature wisp of white and grey on the side. I'll finish off by giving some brow definition, as Guts' eyebrows are forever and always on fleek. Then I'll get his cape sorted by a quick blasting of the airbrush. Now the cape is a black cape, but I want to give it at least a little bit of depth, so I'm blasting some varying levels of greys and darks to the high points for some highlights, and going back over the shadows with some black to bring the darker points back in. 
and to finish off our berserker I'll do some edge highlighting to the armor with some super shiny silver paint and just make sure I'm hitting all of the little details to bring them out and give some extra pop and shine to them. Once done, guts is finished and we can move on to the sword. We did OMM, now it's back to NMM. Now I've never really been that successful with NMM in the past but I wanted to give it a go here so I'll start by basing the blade with a dark grey and then I'll map out some separated blocks of lighter grey in opposing points across the sword. Within those blocks I'll make a smaller centre of even lighter grey and then get progressively smaller and smaller and lighter and lighter, always keeping the layers nice and thin so we can blend between them using glazes. I'll then pop some darker grey and a centre point of black in between those blocks to really give us some darker definition and again use some glazes to make sure we're smoothly blending between the shades. I'll then hit the very centre points with some white and blend that outwards to give us a proper highlight section and once blended outwards I'll add one final much thinner strip of white into that centre to give us our extreme highlight point. And from that we've actually got somewhat of a successful NMM look for once. Now I just want to finish it off by giving a bit of edge highlighting to make them edges snap, crackle and pop. And I can give it a final chef's kiss which is to highlight some of the battle scars on it with some white and light greys to give us the last bit of definition. And there we have a somewhat successful looking sword. We'll get it propped into place to see how our final swordsman is looking and I'm actually pretty pleased with the outcome here. So I just kind of want to just show something which is quite frankly the first time I've ever made a model on this channel that the face hasn't looked f***ing ridiculous. Hold. Um, you probably can't see it on this camera. Um, so let me just switch to camera B. I think that's the first time I've ever actually painted a face where it hasn't looked like someone has just shat Hello, out a PS2 graphic. Like there's actually some definition and soft blending lines in everything. And he actually looks f***ing mental. I'm somewhat quite proud of that. You know, if I compare it to old Renala, which I painted two years ago. Yeah, she kind of turned out looking like a prepubescent Victorian child. Pizza. Some Which, you know, wasn't really what I was kind of going for. I'll just put the two together. This guy. No, oh, this guy. This guy. No, oh, this guy. Anyway. So if that isn't the best case study of keep practicing and you'll get better, I don't know what is, because that stark difference is quite alarming. So yeah, I'll get back to the video now, but I thought that was quite a pleasing thing to take pause and reflect on, which is quite good to sort of see the differences and how you come along and how you improve, so we'll just get back to the video now. After all that waffle, it's time to start the base. To begin the base, I'm gonna cut this slab of wood I had lying around to a more suitable base-shaped base. And now that we've made the square wood into smaller square wood, I'll start chucking a whole bunch of XPS foam offcuts onto it and I'll use some hot glue to secure them to the base and get a relatively even spread across it so that it just looks like a terribly built Minecraft level. So to get some funky rock shapes going, I'll start slicing away at our blocks randomly, haphazardly and not all that safely. And then we should get some jagged looking nubbins here. Now I'll just get the boys put in position to make sure that the heights are correct and that they're gonna slot in and stand up on their own. My thinking behind the base is that it's going to be inspired by the eclipse. We already have an onion knight being sacrificed already, so it just kind of makes sense. I'm just going to have lots of crying crimson bale. It's just scattered across the rocks and nicely nestled in everywhere. So yeah. So I 3D printed this little guy here. The back didn't actually print due to a failure, but actually it's better that way so I can stick it to the base easier. Now I'll start off by getting it primed black and I'll print out 34 more of them. I've done a bunch of different bayolet faces that I could find online. The link to each of them will be in the description and we'll just need to get all these little crybabies shoved into the rocks. So I'll just grab a knife and start cutting some perfectly betchy shaped holes into the rocks and start popping them all in place. 
So I have here a base ready to go with all of the crimson bayonets stuck around it. I've used about a number of bayonets across it of varying facial expressions. I do have a couple of the unactivated bayonets on this because quite frankly, I like the look of their sleepy little faces. So that was an artistic choice. Quite frankly, I don't want to hear in the comments, oh, you've used the wrong bayonets. Cause yeah, you wouldn't have an unactivated bayonet in the eclipse because it kind of defeats the whole purpose of what it is, but I don't care. So you can check here how it's all looking. I just need to let the last of the bayonets set in place. And then all I need to do is to get some of the rocky texture on it. So it's finally coming together quite well. And here's my little texture applicator. All you've got to do is just start smacking it all over to give us that nice rocky texture. It might have been easier to do this before sticking all my boys down, but I didn't. And if you don't know by now, I like to make things way harder for myself than they need to be. And with a lovely rock texture applied, I'll start filling all the little gaps everywhere with some polyfiller, which will give us some smooth edges once sanded and also help seal our little betchies in place. Now to get the two lads in place, I'm not going to glue them because I need to move them around and make sure that they're positioned correctly. So instead what I did was I bought these tiny little extra strong magnets and I'm going to glue those in place into these little feet holes that I made in the foam. And I'll also seal them in with a bit of polyfiller as well to give them a bit of extra hold. And then I'll glue the magnets to both of their feet as well. Now, whilst the magnets are setting in place, I'll just go over the polyfiller once it's dried with a couple blasts of sandpaper to smooth everything out. And there we have a little eclipse base ready to start painting up. Now, to prime it, we'll make our forbidden milkshake blend of Mod Podge and black paint. And I'll start farting that all over the base to get it ready for painting. The Mod Podge will help seal and protect the foam and the black paints are going to paint it black. Before I start adding any color, I'm gonna blast the bayonets with a white ink in my airbrush to give us a little zenithal highlight to help us with some contrast shading. Now that it's highlighted, I'll start spraying a layer of red contrast paint onto the faces and the contrast paint should react nicely to the shading primer underneath and give us a natural fall off of shadow. I was gonna paint over the red halos that I accidentally sprayed around them, but I actually quite liked the little red glows that they had going on, so I decided to keep them. And then I'll start painting the faces up. All 35 of them. Starting off with some red highlights onto the raised parts of the face, similar to how we went about doing guts. And a little bit of pinkiness to the tongue, then a layer of bright white to the eyes and the teeth, and then another glaze of red to drop into the eyes for the bloodshot look. A little bit of dark oil wash will help stain the teeth and then I can add in the bright blue iris followed up with a little center of lighter blue for some depth. Now to give a little bit of dental hygiene back to him, I'll just add in some brighter highlights to the tips of the teeth before going back to the eyes and finishing them off with a tiny black dot for the pupils and a tiny white reflection dot. And I'll just repeat that process 34 more times to get all of the other faces painted in, which took many, many hours. I did find that basing the blood drips from the eyes with the white before painting them gave me a much brighter red tone, which stood out against the face a lot more. So I decided to do that across all of the other faces as well. And from there, I just followed the same method as the first one again and again and again and again and again and again. And, again and, again. and there we have a horrifying screaming base of Baylitz. I did have the initial thought to do a base solely comprised of baylets and no rock, but I went against that idea just for the sake of being able to magnet the boys in place, which was far easier to do in foam rather than something that was 3D printed. And all that's left for the base is just a dry brush on some rocky tones, which I'll do with a base of gray with a few progressively lighter shades, each one drier and smaller than the last, before finishing off with a white dry brush layer onto the very tips of all the edges to give us some cool shading. And there's our complete base. All we got to do now is just get some onion blood spilling and wrap it all up. So to get the onion attached and splitting in half, I'm going to drill a hole into the solid bottom half. Hey! and I'll get the armature wire from the top half shoved into that little drill hole and I can start bending the top around to give it that splitting look. And there's a little chopped onion. Now we just gotta make some onion blood. And for that, we'll need some Uhu glue and some red acrylic. 
The Uhu glue is super tacky, stretchy and sticky and is perfect for any kind of goop. Mix it with the red and you get red goop. I'll stretch it between the top and bottom half to create the innards ripping effect and after that we end up with this horrific and upsetting sight to which Realstone asked me, do onions actually bleed? To which I replied, "Fuck." I'm just going to say onions do indeed bleed for the purposes of this video and with that we can get them popped into place and just hope that the magnets do their magic. Then I can slip the sword into the side of the onion and we can call this sacrificial offering done. And we can move on to the French onion soup party shots. One man's dream can hold dominion over the entire world. I've my own road to take and a duty to fulfill. While many can pursue their dreams in solitude, other dreams are like great storms blowing hundreds, even thousands of dreams apart in their wake. In my mind, a true friend never relies on another's dream. Old friend, I, Siegfried of the Knights of Katarina, have come to uphold my promise. Let the sun shine upon this Lord of Cinder. For me to call a man my friend, he must be equal to me in all respects. To your valor, and my old friend Yorp, long may the sun shine. Well, thanks very much for joining me in my first proper video in the new set. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to drop a like, leave me a comment, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I just want to give a big shout out to all my lovely patrons who have just voted on what the next big project is going to be. And I think it's going to be a doozy. So if you want to head on over there to help support the channel and get involved, the link is on the screen and also down below. And another big final thank you to Real Stone for their unwavering help in all these wacky projects. And a last shout out to good old Jack Jacksepticeye for the hilarious suggestion of cutting onions. And with that, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.